You probably knew rattlesnakes could be dangerous, but did you know that not all rattlesnakes are created equal? Out of the 32 species in the US, the tiger rattlesnake stands out as the most venomous of them all. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and to find out if this is truly the bite to worry about, I'll need to catch one of North America's most deadly reptiles. All around us, there's a secret world that's just teeming with strange life forms. Some of the most alien and bizarre creatures live alongside us, oftentimes without us ever knowing, and it's my mission to uncover all their secrets. In nature, one of the most fascinating biological phenomena is venom. Over the years, I've worked with some of the most venomous creatures in the world. This right here is an absolute treat. From snakes, and it's one snake you really do not want to get bit by, to spiders, that is insane. Oh, hello. Venomous creatures are some of the most misunderstood and fascinating animals on the planet. Getting up close and personal with these animals, I'm not only living out a lifelong dream, but also getting a chance to show you the truth about these widely feared creatures. And the next one on my radar is America's most toxic snake. So I'm heading all the way from my home state of North Carolina to the deserts of Arizona in search of the tiger rattlesnake. We were tipped off. This is the spot to get a lot of the really special reptiles in this area. And I mean, look behind me. It looks like the classic West, iconic vegetation, landscape. We're surrounded by mountains. Oh man, this is like, I think I'm in a Western movie right now. It's amazing. The Sonoran Desert is one of the most unique ecosystems on the planet. The world's wettest desert. At the peak of the monsoon season, the rocky sands are obscured by the green of cacti and shrubs. But we're not here to sightsee. This region is home to some of the most iconic reptiles in the world. And in the wet season, you can bet they're on the move. Daytime is too hot for most things to be out. So we're headed to a mountain road at dusk. Our target snakes are rock crevice dwellers and will den in the same ridges for years. Our hope? That the rains have brought some of these secretive vipers out of their holes so we can hike them up. But it's a long walk to get to tiger territory, and there are other highly venomous creatures we need to watch out for along the way, because the rains mean that this area's next generation is on the move as well. Look at this little guy. This has got to be the smallest rattlesnake I've ever seen. This right here is a baby, probably newborn, Mojave rattlesnake. Hi, buddy. Come here. They have one of the most toxic venoms, but they also have a lot of it. Meaning that if you're going to be bitten by any rattlesnake, this is the one that you least want to be bitten by. They are no joke. And the craziest thing is, this is a snake that actually breaks one of the rules that I normally talk about with vipers here on the channel. Normally, the old saying that a baby viper is deadlier than the adult is false. But in a sense, it's actually true with this one. Not because they have more venom, not because they can't control the venom they're putting into your system, but because their venom is even more toxic as a baby. See, Mojaves, unlike a lot of rattlesnakes, have a neurotoxin and a hemotoxin in their venom. Neurotoxins attack the nerves. Hemotoxins attack the blood. And those different toxins are useful depending on what kind of prey they're eating. As adults, they're bigger, more robust snakes, so they can take down mammals. And with mammals, which depend on a really, really fast metabolism and a quick circulation of blood, a blood attacking toxin, like a hemotoxin, is actually a more secure way to take them down. When you're little like this, a rabbit, even a, even a mouse or a rat is way too big for him to eat. So he's gonna be eating little invertebrates, reptiles, Maybe even small amphibians, even though amphibians are kind of hard to come by out in the desert. With these cold-blooded animals, the metabolism isn't quite as fast. He needs a neurotoxin, something that's going to completely shut their entire system down so that it's not fighting back when he goes to eat. And that means the toxicity of the venom is way higher. So snakes lack bite force because a lot of times they're eating prey that's larger than their head. As a result, they need a throat that can expand and huge biting muscles aren't really possible. And when you're eating prey that's bigger than your head, there's a good chance that if that prey fights back, you're not gonna survive. So snakes have to evolve a way to deal with that. We see a lot of snakes immobilize their prey, kill it with venom, and that's what these vipers are doing. But different prey items need different venoms to actually be killed efficiently. See, mammals like us, we actually have a really fast metabolism. It's why we have to eat so much. It's actually what makes us warm-blooded. 
that heat that comes off of our bodies is literally from our bodies burning the fuel that we take in. It's called metabolic heat. And with that fast metabolism, we have blood pumping through our veins constantly. So for an animal that's eating mammals, it makes sense to have a toxin that targets that fast moving blood. But if you're eating reptiles, you need something different. Cold blooded animals have a much slower metabolism. And as a result, a hemotoxin might not immobilize and kill them as fast as a reptile eating snake would need them. So they've evolved neurotoxins. The problem is the tiger rattlesnake actually eats both, which necessitates that crazy cocktail of hemotoxins and neurotoxins that makes the snake so unbelievably toxic. Turns out tiger rattlesnakes are not easy to find. With a reputation like theirs, one of the biggest reasons they don't frequently cause hospital visits is simply because they're pretty hard to get to. We decided to enlist expert help. You know, I do a lot of research and Nicholas does a lot of research so that we look to see maybe the habitat where something might be found going into field guides. Enter Robin Nick from Smetlogic Herping. Easily some of the best snake hunters in the Southwest. If anyone could help us get a tiger rattlesnake, snake, it was these guys. It really boots on the ground, honestly. We ask other herpers, we compare notes, and then we just put boots on the ground and try different strategies and then end up finding our targets, usually. Rob told us he had a great tiger rattlesnake spot. It's great by his standards. This was going to be a good night. And wouldn't you have it, we're barely out 20 minutes, and he's already spotted something very special. Really big for a tiger. We think it's gravid, so we're just going to let this lady kind of scoot on her way but man there's another tiger right down the road it's the night of the tigers and the corals in southeastern arizona so you pay 9.99 this is what you find right here hi you that is a tiger hi buddy come here come here it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. oh you're fast all right all right come out where we can see you look at that right there this is probably one of the most special pit vipers we possibly could have found. Right here is a rattlesnake that possesses a venom more toxic than any other reptile in North America. And in the world, no rattlesnake is more toxic than this one right here. That is the tiger rattlesnake and something I've been wanting to see for a very, very long time. Now you can see right here, he's pretty small. You know, we've seen some big diamondbacks. This would be a fully grown adult right here and he is not happy. Yeah, that S up pose right there, mm -mm. I don't wanna get any closer than about there. These guys, like a pygmy rattlesnake, their small size means they can really lunge. And look at how thick that is. That's a muscular snake. Oh, 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 no, no, no. No kisses from you today. I think they're named tiger rattlesnake from that banding all down the back. Looks like a little tiger. And while it's a really cool patterning for us to see, it actually gives them super good camouflage in this desert environment. Because what it does is it obscures their outline, makes them look like they're not a snake. And since they're ambush hunters, they'll be sitting coiled like this or like he was a second ago, sitting in a little rock crevice. And they'll honestly stay in the same rock crevices for a lot of their life. So this guy probably lives in this little section of desert right here. I say it's very toxic, right? But I didn't say this is the deadliest snake because these guys don't even have any recorded human deaths. Kind of nuts, right? They're super toxic. But have a look at his head there. Really small head for a rattlesnake. What that means is the venom yield from this snake is gonna be a lot less. One of the things I talk about a lot here on the channel is that the dosage makes the poison. The toxicity of the venom isn't the only variable at play when you're bitten by a snake, a spider, a centipede, any of those things. And that small little snake. Oh. No, 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 no. No kisses for me. Oh, he's chasing me, he's chasing me. <laughs> Just kidding. So, right there, I'd be asking Spencer, is that an aggressive display? And I'm gonna say no. We have brighter lights coming from that direction and two heat sources. This snake is seeing it as, well, I've got two enemies over there and bright lights, one enemy over here. I might be able to flee in this direction. If he wanted to bite me, he'd be lunging at me, he'd be striking. This is not a mean animal. This snake is extremely, extremely frightened. You see that rattling right there? People will see that, they think, oh, it's an aggressive display, but a lot of these snakes are doing that to show, hey, I'm really stressed out. These are absolutely animals we don't need to be fearing. This is the most toxic rattlesnake in the world right here. I am just mere feet from it, and I am not in any immediate danger as long as I keep the snake at a healthy distance. You can see right there, where's he going? He's not going towards me. 
he's going towards that brush over there. He probably has a little burrow tucked back in that little cliffside, and he's trying to hide in there. Listen to him hiss in there. He is very, very unhappy. And that coil position right there is probably the absolute worst time to step on or touch a rattlesnake. They are athletic, and he is warmed up. The desert is hot, and they use that heat for their metabolism, for their speed, and always, always exhilarating to work with these snakes. But it's absolutely beautiful something that we want to keep seeing in the wild. They're important parts of the ecosystem. Like, yeah, sure, they're an incredibly dangerous bite, right? But they wouldn't have lasted for millions of years out here if they didn't have a purpose to play. So the best thing we can do is leave them alone and appreciate a fleeting encounter with a beautiful creature from the secret world. Hi, buddy. Oh yeah, you're not happy. It is absolutely unreal to be this close to one of the most venomous snakes on the planet. And case in point, these creatures really don't want anything to do with us. They just want to be left alone to go carry out their crazy biology in the secret world that surrounds us every day. That is breathtaking. See, this is true for most rattlesnakes. In fact, while for this snake, the most interesting biology is the fact that its venom is so toxic, for some of them, they've actually specked into even more interesting ecological niches. In many cases, the most interesting thing is not necessarily their venom. And in my opinion, one of the most unique and weird rattlesnakes is actually the Sidewinder. If you want to learn what makes that snake so unbelievably special, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.